So hello, my name's Stephen Gates and I'm participating in Open Knowledge's um, Global Census. The census measures the openness of each country around um, 15 different data sets that um, initially the G20 and uh, G8 recommended uh, be published. Um, we've got an extra five this year, um, being procurement tenders, water quality, uh, health performance, land ownership and weather forecast, uh, which were added through a consultation process. How all this um, uh, happens is that people go in and um, effectively contribute to um, assessing these data sets. So it's crowdsourced and that crowdsourcing happens um, from now through to the 20th of December. And then after that, some experts go through and review each type of data set. So um, things are consistently scored. So somebody that knows about pollution and open data will consistently score um, those data sets. And uh, at the end, we end up with a, um, an index. And I'll just quickly go over that to show you. So that's that. Yep. So I think it, it runs through till the 20th of September, is it, Steve? That's all right. Yep, cool. So if I go, um, Oops, index. So the final results, so what we're seeing here is um, the results of the last census and they get visualised um, via a map and then you can go onto the map and say, well, how did Australia go? And you can find out more. And what you'll see is that we went up uh, in 2014, up to number five globally and for each of these different data sets, they were assessed around nine questions and those questions are weighted and they result in a, a score. So it looks like um, the fact that we don't have uh, very good information about government spending is um, dragging Australia down. But that's how, it, um, uh, how the results get collated and then this in combination with some research um, ends up producing another um, paper which is called the Open Data Barometer, uh, which is another measure of each nation's openness, um, and this is one of the inputs. So I'll just go back to um, the census itself. So that's at globalcensusokfn.org. Oops, not quite sure what happened there. There we go. So let's see what's involved in um, reviewing a data set. So let's say I want to go and look at um, the company register. So I can uh, click on that and press update. And so what it's going to show me is Australia's entry for the company register. And there's a definition of what the company register needs to contain. So the name and a unique identifier, address survey year and we basically go through and look at what the current answer is for this particular question and change it if we need to. So does the data exist? Um, so before you start this you've found the, um, the open data for uh, Australia's company register and if you scroll down uh, it was found at data.gov.au, the federal government's open data portal. Um, so you can go and have a look at there and make sure it's still there. Um, maybe the file name has got a 2015 instead of a 14 on it. But once you've found the data, you should be able to quickly go through and answer the questions. And each time you choose an answer, the um, screen will adjust. So if I click no here, um, if the data doesn't exist, um, there's not much more to say about it. Um, if I put it back to yes, then it's going to ask me who's the publisher. So the last entry was ASIC. Um, so I can adjust that if that's been changed or I can just type that in again. And just go through and um, uh, answer each question. If you're not sure about a question, so is the data in a digital form, you can go over to the side here and show more and it'll explain what we mean by digital form. So you might know that the data is held digitally by the government in um, a website, but perhaps it's not publicly available. So um, you go down to the next 
um, question and you can answer whether it's publicly available, uh, whether it's available for free. And these questions are predominantly based around the open definition, which is another project that Open Knowledge Run, which defines what it is for um, an, a, a work, whether that's something like open data or a play or a video, um, what's involved in making that open. So once you've answered those questions, you can put in some comments. Um, those comments are often quite um, helpful, especially for the reviewer, um, because you might find that the data is actually contained in three data sets spread across different departments. So you might want to put a note there. If you can't find the data, um, you might want to put a note that says, well, I did a search on um, data.gov.au. I went to the department's website in, and just say where you looked for it, just so that you can demonstrate you've made an effort. Um, so I'm not going to submit that, but just before I get off this page, you can choose whether you want to be identified as a submitter or keep your submission anonymous. So one thing you didn't see um, when I got to this page, because I was already logged in, is you um, are asked whether you want to log in. I think you can use your um, Facebook or Twitter credentials. Um, and then it'll either use your name from that account or you can just be anonymous. So I'm going to run away from here, but I have made some changes um, previously and you'll see a change log um, so in here, people around the planet, um, so in Jordan and Japan and Italy, are all putting their submissions in. And at some stage, the um, reviewers will go through and they'll click here and they'll review what you've typed in on that submission page and um, either press approve, reject or um, ask some questions. So there's a little uh, commenting system down the bottom and um, from there uh, they can have a conversation with you if it's not really clear what you meant by certain things. Um, if you're unsure about things you can go to the, the um, FAQ, there's a tutorial or you can press um, support. Now I'm just going to press support here. What that does is it takes you to the Open Knowledge Forum and there um, there is a, um, a there's a general forum around the Open Data Index because the index um, can be not just global but local and regional. But there is a special subcategory for this year's global Open Data Census. And so when you go in here, um, you can ask a question. Um, if you're not, if the help text doesn't um, help you, then um, you can ask questions here and, and there's um, plenty of questions and plenty of people um, answering them for you. Yeah, I think also um, in that discussion forum you even get a badge if you're a reviewer or a contributor to the census. So it's one of oh, the I haven't seen that, but um, yeah, yeah you, in, when you go over to groups, um, there is a whole uh, badging system. So I'm a local coordinator, I'm a member of OK Australia and um, I've won a whole bunch of other badges as well. Yep. Um, so they've basically gamified this um, discussion forum uh, to encourage conversation and and, um, and to thank people for their contributions. Cool. So with, with that ASIC one, really we're looking at 2014 data that comes up by default. So someone reviewing one that's been previously submitted, I guess what they're really looking at is that data set and making sure that it's still being updated for 2015, that it's got current information? And yeah, so, so the update could be uh, incredibly simple. If, if the URL hasn't changed for that data set and the publisher uh, uh, hasn't changed, when you go through and um, I'll just go back to that company register again. Uh, it, it could be a very uh, quick process because you could go, yes, the data still exists, it's still um, published by ASIC, um, that is still the right description, it's still that, it's still that, it's still that. Um, yeah, so the URL's right. Um, you might want to check that it's still being published in those um, multiple formats. So what happens over time is um, governments sometimes provide 
um, data sets in, in multiple ways. So you might be able to access a CSV and download it in bulk, or they might provide an API as well. Um, so you can go in here and just comma separate each of the different um, file formats um, that you see there. But probably this one, as your point, um, Steve, is, is it updated on a timely basis? And, and timely is um, a bit flexible. So if it was a budget, you'd expect it was updated every year. If it's an election, then you'd expect it to be updated if there was one. But if there wasn't an election in 2015, then, um, and then you've still got the last election there, then that's fine. Yeah. Cool. So the other thing, I guess the other thing to stress is that um, this is the global um, census. So it's just assessing data sets at a national level. So most of the time when you go looking, you're going to find the data on data.gov.au. Um, and so it does ask questions around um, data sets that aren't really um, appropriate or, or um, fit for a, a federation like Australia. So when it asks about a national transport system, well, transport systems are typically run by um, the states or, or local councils. And so it gets a bit tricky um, answering for some of the data sets, but certainly, um, you know, Australia has a national budget and we spend that money. We have national elections, company register, so most of them um, are applicable at a national level. But if you're interested in seeing the, um, the how the states are going, we can go to australia.census.okfm.org and you can see how the states are going um, with a similar, but not, not exactly the same, uh, set of um, data. So um, we've got crime statistics and traffic accidents and real time uh, transport. Um, so tracking buses and trains as they travel along. They're, I guess, more uh, relevant to a state than um, the federal government. And if we want to go down one level to what our councils are doing, down the bottom here, there's a link to um, a census that is done at a council level. Um, so Australia has almost uh, 600 uh, local governments around the country and you'll see there's a totally different set of data sets here. So, uh, you know, ward maps, um, budgets, property boundaries, um, trees, and each of those um, will have their own description. So, um, you know, garbage collection will be around um, what day does the rubbish truck come down my street? Um, so Tuesday morning's great, I'll put the bin out Monday night. And you'll see um, Australia's councils um, are doing a pretty good job, but not every council has an open data initiative. And so after you get um, past the top 15 or so, it starts to look a little bit blank. Now, it doesn't mean that the data is not there and you could actually go um, to Ballarat and maybe what you'll find is that on their website, they'd have a PDF of their wards. It might be a map of where all the, the wards are. So you could go in here and press add, just like we showed you before for the, the national one, and it asks exactly the same um, questions. And so you go through and go, yes, the data does exist. It's, it's published by Ballarat. Um, it's in a digital form, being a PDF. It's publicly available on their website. It's available for free. Um, it's online, um, but PDFs are not machine readable. So we'd be saying no to that one and we'd be putting in the URL. So we've got census at a local, state and federal um, level. Um, but right now we're doing the, the country or the federal uh, census around the planet uh, and it finishes on the, 12, uh, the 20th of September. Cool. And those local, as you mentioned, those local ones and the state ones, there's no cutoff for those. They can be done anytime. That's right. They're rolling. They're, they're going um, continuously and basically 
on the 31st of uh, December at midnight, um, it basically um, flips over. And so those little badges you saw on the, the, um, the, uh, the, the global census, we'd end up with little 2015s underneath each of those. And that's just an indicator to say the, the data or the assessment of the data is a little bit dated. Um, you might want to go back in and check that it's still um, relevant. And one of the nice things about this is all of this is actually um, open data itself. So um, you can download this um, as um, JSON or CSV. So you can go down to the footer and you can say download CSV. And um, you can start building out your own um, uh, applications or spreadsheets or whatever to um, perhaps demonstrate progress over time. So. That's one of the things I did when I started up um, uh, this, the, the state-based census, the regional census. So here I just downloaded the data and made a graph that from February when we launched through to March, how did um, different states um, go with putting um, their data in. Uh, if I push this out a bit forward, further, we'd see Victoria has rocketed up into um, second place, but this was just a demonstration that you can pull down the data. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, and that, that's when they were registered in the census, not necessarily when the data was published. So there's an incentive there. The sooner you register that it's in um, the census, uh, the sooner you'll get that sort of good feedback in, in these sorts of downloads. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. So um, what kind of conversation went on at that global level around the additional data sets for the national census? Oh, okay. So um, actually, I've got to open it here. So um, one of the questions that was um, being asked, because we've got some new data sets um, around the weather, uh, people were trying to understand um, you know, so you're asked, does the data exist? And in this case, the weather, the criteria for the weather um, data set was it had to have five day forecasts for temperature, wind and precipitation. And what you might find is that um, your country might have three day forecasts as um, open data. So, you know, the conversation is, well, how do I score that? Do I say that the data um, doesn't exist or do I say that it um, does exist and then I just put a comment down the bottom explaining that it's only three not five. Um, so what you'll find is that people will get in and, and um, have a chat about that and um, it's I guess it's the group around the planet helping each other but there are also people who are open knowledge staff members that'll come in and give you, I guess, a, an official answer uh, as well. So I guess uh, we're getting clarity on the new data sets and what they mean, as well as things like, um, uh, how do I answer this, this question? Um, there, was, there was one, I'm just trying to find it where it went. Uh, there was, anyway, there was one about um, uh, if, I, if I access, if I have to provide my email uh, to get access, is that publicly available or not? Um, so you could argue that um, I should just be able to get that download anonymously and if I can't get it like that, then there's some restriction and it's not open data. So there was a debate like that going on. Um, and so there, I guess they're the two things. How do I interpret the 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 meaning of um, the data set, so health, transit, whatever, and how do I interpret the question? So they're typically the sorts of conversations you'll see here on the Open Knowledge Forum. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, I guess the thing is that this doesn't evolve all the time. So with the new data sets, and even last year, I think that spending one was new last year. So while we dropped uh, because we didn't have spending data, um, I, I guess that's an incentive for us to catch up in subsequent years and start publishing that stuff. Yeah, I think, I think that's the intent is that um, you just keep lifting the bar um, and I think the bar is being lifted um, 
around what are the key data sets that really every nation should have to, to, to generate some sort of value. And sometimes that, that value is um, an economic value. Um, other times it's a, a social value or an environmental value. So, the, the, you know, there has been quite a lot of thought into to, um, to choosing the data sets and the data sets initially were selected by the G8 and G20, um, I guess, trying to work on um, government transparency, accountability and um, more recently combating corruption. Um, but things like water quality have been added this year um, because there's a lot of places uh, around the planet, unfortunately, where water quality is an issue. Yeah, and I, I guess that mirrors the uptake of open government around the world, that whilst it started in develop, developed economies, um, more and more we're seeing open data as a, a great indicator of how to do regional development work or a great um, asset for doing regional development work. So places like the World Bank or the UN, uh, the UNDP, um, as they start to work in developing economies or as they continue to work in developing economies, um, they put a lot of investment in um, developing open data sets. Um, so you can see those additional data sets there. I think that's possibly where they're coming from, that um, these are things that are helpful um, and create great, good social value as well. Exactly. Cool. So we've got till the 20th of this month and um, we just have to do a good job and get it all updated. Yeah, so, and, and um, it hopefully should be quite an easy process because um, Australia's done a reasonable job um, publishing the, those existing 10 data sets, but we will have to go hunting for um, where do we find um, open weather data. So I'd start with the Bureau of Meteorology. Um, I'm not sure whether their data is open or whether it's, um, whether it's sold or, or both. Um, so somebody that knows a bit about weather data can go in and once you've found those data sets, then answering those, those questions is, is really quite easy. Um, and if you make a mistake, um, you might just get a message from the reviewer saying, I don't quite understand your answer here. Um, so, yeah, don't be afraid, get in, have a go, and, um, and keep uh, Australia up in the, the open data standings. <laughs>